Good morning to all of you. Today I am continuing with my our lecture topic topic uh, seven yeah but I'm not going to talk about probability. On probability I am going to uh, upload in the slide yeah for you to look at it because it's not very important and the important part of probability are already discussed in earlier lecture so i'm going to topic a that is um, on uh, hypothesis testing yeah so we are going to study about the uh, definition and concepts in hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is actually what is a procedure yeah uh, so you uh, when you have already have a research question you want to know whether the research question can be uh, uh, you will be doing some uh, research on your research question and you want to know whether the hypothesis that you already uh, uh, already uh, drawn there you want to see whether the hypothesis can be accepted or can be rejected so it's actually a systematic pro procedure yeah, hypothesis testing to see whether the hypothesis is accepted or rejected yeah uh, and this is uh, the most uh, important part in any research here we say it's psychology research or any research yeah and it's very important part in a statistic it's a procedure very important in a statistic so we need some steps yeah to in order to accept our uh, ultimately our aim here is to accept the hypothesis or reject the hypothesis so here we have few steps yeah. Step here is to formulate the null hypothesis. You must have your hypothesis. Maybe some of your research, you do not have any hypothesis. Not necessarily all research need to have hypothesis. There are some research you don't need yeah, uh, hypothesis. So now comes the question, when must I have and when must is not needed? Uh, it's back to again, what is your research question? Uh, what is your research question? So from uh, if your research question, you feel that you need to have a null hypothesis, then you have to test the null hypothesis. So you formulated the null hypothesis, then you identify the alternative statistic. Uh, you have a null hypothesis and also alternative hypothesis. Then you compute the p-value. I'll be explaining what is the p-value and compare the p-value to an acceptable significant value. And hypothesis testing here has a very important role in psychology measurement. All measurement is very important. Whatever research, this p-value is very essential and uh, involving grassy idea that makes little sense. All right. Um, so hypothesis, uh, what is a hypothesis test? A hypothesis test is a standard format for assessing statistical evidence. You want to find the evidence. So what is the cutoff point? Yeah. So uh, uh, hypothesis test you want to test you want to assess your uh, evidence all right so it's a method that uses simple data to evaluate yeah so the hypothesis is going to tell you about your uh, population yeah so hypothesis test examine two opposing hypotheses about a population the null and the alternative hypothesis yeah it's going to test the null and the hypothesis alternative hypothesis correct the hypothesis testing pro process uh, so when you test your hypothesis what are the steps you have five steps here step one restate the question as research hypothesis so from your research hypothesis yeah from your research question you will have a hypothesis and now hypothesis about the population you're you're restating your question yeah okay Step two, determine the characteristic of the comparison distribution. Step three, determine the cutoff sample score on the comparison distribution at which the null hypothesis should be rejected. Here you are deciding uh, under what circumstances you are going to reject your null hypothesis. When you reject your null hypothesis, you are going to accept the alternative hypothesis okay for example i will show you the example of a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis yeah later we'll be seeing that 
Okay, step four, determine the sample scores on the comparison distribution. These are the steps. Now, maybe the steps does not make any sense to you, but later when you look at the slides, you will understand better. Okay, and then step five is the last step that you are going to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis. So you are having two hypotheses here. One is um, a null hypothesis. Another one is alternative uh, hypothesis. So when the null hypothesis you reject, you are going to accept the alternative hypothesis. Okay. So definition of concept and rejecting and accepting null hypothesis. Okay. The important, it is important to emphasize the two points about the conclusion that one can make from the hypothesis testing process. So as I told you just now, you can either reject the null hypothesis or you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Whenever we do a research, we always try to reject the null hypothesis. Then we feel our research is successful, but not necessary. Yeah? Not necessary. Uh, so when we say that our null hypothesis is rejected, we are going to accept the alternative hypothesis. For example, I say those who, uh, for just a simple example, yeah, null hypothesis. The mean of the student uh, scoring A using um, A teaching method is equivalent to student using B teaching method. The mean are the same. That means uh, the teaching method that I'm going to introduce is not going to change anything about the uh, performance or the scores of the student. All right, so that is my null hypothesis. My alternative hypothesis will say that the mean between the two groups using the teaching method are not the same. That will be my alternative hypothesis. So here I'm doing a research. I want to sh show that my teaching method is better. So definitely I will try to reject my uh, null hypothesis. I will try to reject that the mean is the same. The mean is the same is I use this teaching method. My student did not... Uh, did not improve. So what is the point? I do a, a, a research on the teaching method. So I, whenever I do some, um, what do you call that, uh, in, in intervention, I always try to show my intervention is better. Yeah. So uh, the null hypothesis saying that the intervention has not no has no effect. Alternative uh, hypothesis showing that my intervention um, makes yeah, uh, makes the performance better, right? Uh, that is what is my alternative hypothesis. Okay, so uh, a simple example. First, suppose your null hypothesis is rejected based on the result which supports the research hypothesis. Yeah, it's rejected. Yeah, it's rejected based on the results. So you're going to reject your hypothesis. But as results of the research studies are based on probability, so one can't say that the result prove the research hypothesis or that the results show that the hypothesis is true yeah, based on the results yeah, and based on the probability. So at the time of rejecting the null hypothesis, it's, it's better to mention that the results are significantly, statistically significant. Yeah. So when you want to reject, you must say, I'm rejecting this based on what? Uh, based on the probability. Probability come from where? From statistic. Yeah. So when you reject, you cannot simply say without any evidence, I'm rejecting because I don't like it. No, it's not like that. You need to have a proof. Uh, so you are going to prove it using a statistical method. Second, when a result is not extreme enough to reject the null hypothesis, you do not say that a result supports the null hypothesis. So when you do statistic, you find out that... Uh, uh, your evidence, yeah, your evidence is not uh, strong enough, yeah, strong enough. So you do not say that the result supports the null hypothesis. You simply say the result is not statistically significant, yeah. So you say that uh, I cannot totally reject. So I say that the result is not statistically significant to reject. As a result, that is a strong, not strong enough to reject the null hypothesis means that the study was inconclusive. Uh, you cannot make a conclusion because your evidence are not strong, so you cannot reject. 
So the result may not be extreme enough to reject the null hypothesis, but the null hypothesis might still be false. So you need to make a decision, decision rule. You look at your p-value. Yeah, you look at the p-value and the region of acceptance. All right, p-value. The strength of the evidence, that is what you call as p-value. We always mention about p-value. So what is the meaning of the p-value? The strength of the evidence in support of a null hypothesis is measured by the p-value. Yeah. So if the p-value, p is actually probability, yeah? probability is less than the significant le level, then we reject the null hypothesis. So p-value must be less than significant level. So you will be asking, what is the level? When can I reject my null hypothesis? Okay, region of acceptance is the range of value if the test statistic falls within the region of acceptance. The null hypothesis is not rejected. So if it falls, the p-value is less, you can reject. If your p-value is more, more here means that it falls within the uh, region of acceptance then you cannot yeah, reject your null hypothesis. I'm talking about null hypothesis so far. Yeah? So the region of acceptance is defined so that the change of making a type 1 error is equivalent to the significant level. So here I'm introducing, according to your learning outcome, you must know what is type uh, 1 error and type 2 error. Yeah? So when you reject your null hypothesis wrongly, you are doing a, uh, what you say, uh, you are making an error, yeah, uh, an error. And this error, you have two types, error type 1 and error type 2. The set of value outside the region of acceptance is called region of rejection. So you either accept, you fall in that category, you can accept, yeah, or you can reject. Just like I say, students who, who get 50 to 80, uh, they are, I consider them as the uh, A scorers. So those who don't fall in that category, they are not high scorers. So I'm rejecting. You see, they don't fall in the category, right? So if the test statistic falls within the region of rejection, the null hypothesis is rejected. So depends, your results will show you the p-value, you look at your p-value and you will know that whether you can accept or you can reject your yeah? null hypothesis. So when are you going to reject? When are you going to accept? Okay, we have two concepts here, one tail and two tail. One tail and two tail. Hypothesis test. Okay, one tail. One tail, a test of statistical hypothesis where the region of rejection is on only one side of the sampling distribution. Whereas two test, two tail test is a test of statistical hypothesis where the region of rejection is based on two sides of the sampling distribution. So one tail test is called as directional test. Two tail test is called as non-directional test. Okay. Wait now. Later we will see how it uh, how it goes. Try to follow slowly. All right. Here, these are the theory behind. We are more interested in the application. So the application, when you get your results in your SPSS, you must know how to make a interpretation. That's why we are studying the theory. Uh, SPSS will do all the work for you, but how you interpret it, that is, yeah, that is the headache here. All right. So one tail test, more powerful than two tail test, since it is easier to achieve a significant difference. So normally we try to do one tail test because we will, uh, we will always get the rejection of null hypothesis. Remember, I told you just now, we always try to reject the null hypothesis. Yeah. Two tail test is less powerful than one tail test. Okay, this is what I'm talking about the test, the tail test. You look at the first diagram here. Yeah, you can see here Z is zero. That means the mean and the standard division is the difference is zero, right? So it's a bell 
curve, it's a bell curve. Normal, uh, this is what we call as normal distribution. The sample that you got is a normal distribution. And you have two region here. The one, um, the one shaded in red, this is called as one tail test. That means when you do the test, your probability fell in this group. 5%. If it falls in this red area, this is the region, this is the uh, place that uh, your population, yeah, the population, uh, this is the rejected value, right? So if it's 5%, if you get less than 5%, your sample all fall in this category. So you can reject the null hypothesis. Or it could be on the right-hand side, it could be on the negative side, can be the positive side, can be in the negative side. These are the 5% of your sample yeah, they fall in this level, all right? Uh, so when they fall in this category that is less than 5%, we call it as uh, null hypothesis can be rejected. And if you look at the two tail test, you see the value 2.5% is very small, smaller than 5%, yeah? Uh, uh, this is two tail test. Two tail test, when your sample fall in this red area, that means you can reject your null hypothesis. Uh, this is the theory behind it. Uh, how you read your reading, how you read your SPSA data, that is a different story. All right? All right. So one tail test, one tail test tells you the effect of the change in one direction and not the other. Whereas two tail tests, uh, you have taken the possibility of positive and negative effect. All right, uh, a one tail test looks for an increase or decrease in the parameter. Two tail test, it will just look for a change, whether it's same or not same. Yeah, but one tail test, it will show directional. That means it can say that uh, it is smaller or bigger than. Yeah, that will be two tail test. Smaller, I can say A is equals to B. That is my null hypothesis. A is equals to B. But when I say alternative uh, hypothesis, A is not equal to B. When A is not equal to B, A can be bigger than B, A can be smaller than B. Uh, when I say can be bigger, can be smaller, that means I'm looking at increase or decrease. Then it will be a two-tail test. Okay, and one-tail test, uh, one tail test allow you to determine if one is greater or less than the another mean, but not both. Two tail test allows to determine if two means are different from one another, just like what I told you just now. Here, mu h1. h1 is always referring to uh, null hypothesis. Sorry, uh, h o is... Um, Null hypothesis, H1 is alternative uh, hypothesis. So my always null hypothesis, we always say is equal to. Mu here is referring to mean, yeah? mean of the uh, sample. Mean of the sample could be more than the mean of the given value. Okay, it could be bigger, it could be smaller. But when it is... Uh, Null hypothesis, the two means are the same. Mu1 is equal to mu2, for example. Or mu0 is equal to mu. When you use the sign equals to, it is null hypothesis. When you say alternative hypothesis, one value will be bigger. Yeah. So here you look at one tail test and two tail tests. One tail test, two outcomes. B is better than A or B is uh, B is better or B is worse than A, right? For two tail tests, you can have three outcomes. A is better than A, A is same as B is same as A or B is worse than A. That is two tail tests. So it all goes back to your hypothesis, yeah? One tail test can lead to inaccurate and biased result. Two tail test is more accurate and more reliable results. Uh, one tail test, we like to use uh, more of one tail test because it's gained significant, uh, gained significant faster. 
uh, that means is one tail test normally we use p value as 0 0.05 when two tail tests yeah it takes longer to gain the significant all right so now we look at the decision error yeah? this definition and concept of decision error okay. anytime researcher makes a decision using statistics there are four possible outcomes Two of the outcome represent correct decision. Okay, after you do the test, you can you are going to make a decision. What is your decision? Whether to accept the null hypothesis or to reject the null hypothesis. Yeah. So here, um, two of the outcome represent correct decision, whereas two represent error. Okay, I repeat, you can either accept your null hypothesis. Yeah. When you accept your null hypothesis, you are going to reject your alternative hypothesis. Okay. Or I reject my null hypothesis, I accept my alternative hypothesis. I can do that, correct? Okay, you see here. State the nature. Okay, HO is true. HO is true. So you accept HO. That means you made the correct decision. HO is true, but you made a mistake. You're going to reject the HO. HO is true. That means your mean, uh, mean of the sample is equivalent. Group A, group B. I say mean of A and mean of B is the same. Okay, so I do the test. It shows correct. Mean A and mean B. The mean is the same. Okay, so I accepted. I accepted is correct. But I go, the second one is I go and reject. I said, no, but, uh, uh, I'm going to reject my null hypothesis. But actually, your null hypothesis is correct, but you go and reject. So you already made an error. We call this as type 1 error. We call it as alpha, lah, but normally we use the term type 1 error. Okay. I don't want to go so deep inside yeah, because this is the theory part of how you interpret your result. Okay, And then another, another one is that HO is false. You do the test, yeah, uh, you, you realize that uh, I have to reject my null hypothesis. Okay, So you have to reject. Yeah, HO is false, you reject. So when you reject, you are correct. Lah. But instead of rejecting, you go and accept. So you made a type 2 error. So we have two types of error here, type 1 and type 2 error. So type 1 error, huh? um, you see here, you are supposed to accept, but you go and reject the HO. Or you're supposed to reject, you go and accept the HO. So you are making two types of error. So in a decision error, in hypothesis testing, decisions are based on uh, finite sample, so there are uh, possibility of error. There are possibilities of error. It is not about making errors in calculation. It's not in calculation. In the decision making, you made an error. Yeah? Or even about using the wrong procedure. It's not errors in all this. Yeah? It's not in calculation. It's not in the procedure. Um, decision error are situation in which the right procedure leads you did all the right thing but you made the wrong decision yeah so decision error are possible in hypothesis testing because you are making the decision about the population based on the information in sample so now the question is why you made the error because your error you made because uh, your results are based on samples. So when your results are based on sample, you are projecting the answer from your sample to the population. Yeah, to the population. You are projecting your answer from sample to population. So you made an error there. So the hypothesis testing process is set up to make probability of the decision error as small as possible. So of course you make error, but you want to make the error as small as possible. Okay, so we make decision. We have two type, type 1 and type 2 error, which I just explained. 
the probability of committing a type 1 error is called the significant level. The probability of not commi uh, committing a type 2 error is called as power of the test. Yeah. So we focus more on significant level. That is the probability of committing a type 1 error. What is type 1 error? Remember, type 1 error. Type 1 error is HO is true, but you go and reject. Ah, so it's type 1 error. So the probability of committing a type 1 error is called as alpha. It's always denoted by alpha. The probability of committing a type 2 error is called beta and we the symbol that you use is beta, right? Uh, these are all the theories. Don't get scared with statistics. Huh? Uh, these are all the uh, explanation for your, um, uh, what you say, the explanation for your data that you get when you process using SPSS. Of course, SPSS, they have taken in, into all this into the account before they come up with the software. So when you use the software, we are just a user. We don't know the theory behind it. Uh, so this is the theory behind it that you need to know some of it. All right. So the value of alpha is always set before the experiment and the study is undertaken. That means you cannot have it do, then only you decide your alpha value. Cannot. You, before you start your, uh, your procedure, you must already have the value of the alpha. Beta is not usually stated at the beginning of the hypothesis. Type 2 error, we don't bother so much. Yeah? Uh, we bother more about type 1 error. Uh, so type 1 error is probability of overreacting. Uh, is B, we don't bother so much beta because it's underreacting. Okay. Type 1 error. The acceptance of H1. You accept your alternative uh, as I told, we always want to reject our null hypothesis. Yeah, so we go and reject the null hypothesis, and we accept the H one. But our null hypothesis is true. It's true, but you go and reject. We are over reacting, over ambitious with our uh, intervention. Yeah. So the probability of committing a type one er uh, type one error is called a significant level of significant, which is denoted by alpha. Okay, here you look at this, uh, what do you call that uh, normal curve? Yeah, Dumb, uh, you call it as bell curve. So when you choose the critical value, your yeah, alpha value, alpha equals to the area under the curve that is the rejection region beyond the critical value so whatever your results fall under this rate category you can reject your null hypothesis and you will accept the alternative hypothesis yeah so you fall here it will lead to rejection of the null hypothesis and accepting the alternative hypothesis again i repeat null hypothesis you are saying the mean between a and b is the same you got two group okay they go for um weight management program group a group b so they went through a keto diet okay so when you weigh the average weight of a group and the average group of b group you found the mean is the same then you call this as null hypothesis of course, you want to show your keto diet is good, is effective. So what you do, you did this test and then you rejected. You rejected your null hypothesis. When you reject the null hypothesis, what are you saying? You are taking, you are saying that average for the A group, the weight management, and B, B, when they follow the keto diet, their weight, they lose weight. The one A did not follow any diet, they maintain. So now you're showing your keto diet is effective. Uh, so now that is called as uh, alternative hypothesis. So you're committing a uh, type 1 error. That means you rejected. Yeah, saying that my, my program is no good, you reject. You say your program is good. So you're taking the alternative hypothesis, right? Uh, another example here is about... Uh, uh, what a uh, defendant committing uh, convinced 
convicting the defendant when he is innocent. Uh, you you have all the evidence and the person is in, innocent. You're saying the person is innocent. But you go and reject, say, uh, he is not innocent, he's guilty, you throw him in jail. Uh, that is type 1 error. Which is overreacting lah if actually he's innocent but you go and throw him in the jail. Uh, so this is type 1 error. So the lower the significant level, so try to get our significant level lower, the less probability of type 1 error. Generally, we would like to take a small value, typically 0 0.05. Smaller, the better. When the value of alpha is smaller or the p-value is smaller than 0 0.05, you are very unlikely to commit type 1 error. Yeah, you won't throw an innocent person to a jail when you take a smaller alpha value. So type 1 error are generally considered the more serious. So its testing procedure, probability of type 1 error can be controlled. So you want to control yeah, your type 1 error. So you see here, significant level 0 0.2. That means what? If you take your significant level as 0 0.2, you're telling 25% chances of making error, which is quite high. Lah. That means uh, out of five people, yeah, one person will go jail. You're making error here. All right. Uh, if 0 0.05, 5% chances of making error. In 20%, 1%, you throw them to the jail. One person went to jail. You made an error. Is 0 0.01, that means in 100 people, you only one, which is a, a smaller group, lah, a smaller number. Okay, another one, 0 0.0001, that means in 10,000, only one, you made an error. Now, these are the level of significant. Whenever you hear the word level of significant, actually it one. It means what? That chances of making error. Chances of making error. So changing an alpha can and often does affect the result of the test, whether one reject or fail to reject the H0. Okay, type 2 error. Type 2 error, fail to reject H0 when H1 is true, is called as type 2 error. We call it as beta error. So the probability of committing a type 2 error is denoted by beta. Example, acquitted the defendant when he is guilty. He, he made the mistake. He's guilty, but you let him free. Uh, you let him free. Uh, uh, in uh, uh, in uh, what you call that in the uh, judice, uh, what you call that in the uh, judgment. You made this judgment. Yeah. Uh, judiction. You made this judgment saying that the person is uh, guilty, but you set him free. Still is okay. Uh, it's still okay compared to a person who's innocent and you throw him in jail. Of course, isn't it? That is worse. Yeah, That's why they say type 1 error is worse than type 2 error. Type 2 error, he made the uh, the mistake, but you let him free. All right. It is impossible to compute B unless we have specific alternative hypothesis. When the difference between the hypothesized parameter and the actual true value is small, the probability of type Two error is larger. Yeah, when the actual value is very small. So, unlike alpha, beta is not usually stated at the beginning of the hypothesis. Actually, because beta occurs only when the null hypothesis is not true. So, we don't get the, uh, uh, we don't set the beta value, right? So, relationship between type 1 and type 2 error, is it possible? So you take a type 1 error and type 2 error, do you plus it, do you get 0? No. Actually, when your type 1 error goes up, type 2 error decreases. They are inversely proportional. Yeah. So when B goes up, A comes down. Yeah. Beta goes up, alpha comes down. So if you, you have tendency to create a type 1 error, yeah, then you have less tendency to create type 2 error. So how to increase, yeah? So how to make, yeah? Type one and type two error. You want to decrease type one and type two error. You have to increase the sample size. Just now, that's why the bigger the sample size, you will uh, decrease the 
error, type 1 and type 2 error. Because when your sample is big, they will represent the population better. Better. Yeah. Uh, of course, we look, we need to look at time. Yeah, we need to look at the cause. All these are involved. Yeah. The, uh, um, normally, in a postgraduate studies, you your sample have to be very, very big. Yeah. To avoid, yeah. To avoid uh, errors. Yeah. All right. Controlling the errors. Alpha, beta, and N are related. N is number of sample. Yeah. When two of the three are chosen, the third is determined. So alpha, we always choose alpha and N. Eh? Alpha is type 1 error. We try to avoid type 1 error. Remember, throwing the innocent one into the jail are uh, usually chosen. So if type 1 error is serious, select a smaller alpha value and a larger sample. That is how you can control your type 1 error. So what I can make a conclusion here is that Try to get a bigger sample. Don't take minimum sample. Don't take 30. 30 is just for your piloting test. Don't take 30 for your whole sample for the study. Try to get bigger the sample. And uh, earlier, I have already explained to you how to calculate the sample size. If you cannot remember, you can refer back. Yeah. So the approach, rejection region, calculate the actual test statistic and compare it with the critical value. Uh, critical value is the rejection region. P value is the level of significance. To calculate the actual probability of type 1 error, then compare it with what you can take 1%, you can take 5%, or you can take 10% of significant, yeah, level of significant. But to get to reduce your type 1 error, your P value need to be smaller. Smaller the better, your sample should be bigger. Okay, so what's the conclusion? Uh, type 1 error, yeah, the error of rejecting HO when we should fail to reject it. Uh, the, this error in uh, hypothesis testing is equivalent to a false alarm saying there is a difference between the reality but actually there is no difference between the groups. You know, you're committing an error here when there is no difference in your in intervention, for example, painkiller, uh, whether the patient takes the painkiller or doesn't take the painkiller, no effect in the pain, in the scale of the pain, yeah, but you rejected. You said, no, the painkiller is better. So you are already uh, committing a type 1 error in research. Or to error to fail to reject. Actually, your painkiller is good. Ah, uh, if painkiller is good, it's uh, the painkiller that you invented is good, but you underreact. You say it's no good. You go reject. So that's called as type two error. The error is hypothesis testing is equivalent to a miss saying that there is no difference, but actually in reality there is a difference between the two groups. Okay, so that is the uh, part of hypothesis testing. Okay, I will. Um, upload another video which continues with this yeah uh, later on so this is one part of the video i will adding up i'll be adding up another video uh maybe um uh, in a short while later all right okay so that's all for today uh thank you for joining the class